In this lecture, we'll cover the Wilcoxon signed rank test. Our data here is exactly the same data as we used in the Wilcoxon rank sum test, but we're going to treat it a little bit differently. So let's pretend this is a completely new example. Here, let's say we had 12 cars, and we first checked their gas mileage using additive 1. Then we cleaned out the tank, and we checked their gas mileage using additive 2. We're going to test for a difference between additive 1 and additive 2, but these are dependent or matched samples in this case. The Wilcoxon signed rank test is good for matched samples. In other words, it's an analog to the matched samples or dependent samples t-test. It can be used instead when we doubt the normality of the distribution. In other words, if we think that the additives are not normally distributed or that our sample size is too small to guarantee that the sample means are normally distributed, then we can use a non-parametric test and be a little bit safer. Our hypotheses are as follows. The null hypothesis is that there is no difference between the additives. The alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference, and perhaps another way to say that is the median change was non-zero. In other words, once we checked additive 2, we saw a change that was statistically significantly non-zero. There was a difference. Here's how we do the test. It's kind of a complicated procedure, but can be done very quickly in Excel, and you can use this example to do your homework problems or do problems on the test. First, we're going to assess the differences between the two additives, just as we did in the dependent samples t-test. So I'm going to go equals additive 1 minus additive 2. Then I'm going to copy that formula down to all of the cells below using Control-C and Control-V. Notice most of the differences are positive, indicating that additive 1 typically worked better than additive 2 for all those cars. There were two observations here and here that were negative, indicating that those are the only two cars for which additive 2 worked better than additive 1. The next column I'm going to do is the positive column. This is just going to indicate whether or not the differences were positive or negative. So I'm going to say equals if. My condition here will be that if the difference is positive, if it's greater than 0, comma, then I want to put a 1. Otherwise, if it's negative, I want to put a negative 1. It's just giving me the sign, in other words, the positive or negative trait of the difference. Now I'm going to take that, copy and paste it down, Control-C, Control-V, and you'll notice the only two negative 1s showed up with the only negative differences. We're going to use that in a little bit. Next, I want to look at the absolute value of the differences. The differences here indicated which additive was better and by how much for each car. The absolute value of the differences will just say how different were they regardless of which direction. Regardless of which additive was better, this will say how much was it better. So I'm going to use the absolute value function, ABS, of the difference. So ABS of the D2 cell. And then I'm going to copy and paste that one down. Notice now that the two negative differences have just become positive, and that's what we wanted. All we wanted to know was just how different were they, not necessarily which direction, because now we're going to rank the differences. We want to know which differences were most extreme and which differences were least extreme, and in this case, we don't care if it was a positive or negative difference. So that's why we did the absolute value here. Recall the rank function is equals rank. We'd like to rank this cell from among its friends so rank this cell among all of the differences, and we want to rank it in an ascending order. We're going to put dollar signs around the letters for the data set so that that doesn't move when we copy and paste the formula. Now this is going to be really easy. Copy, paste, and now we have all 12 ranks sorted from least to greatest. Notice the smallest difference was essentially no difference, 0 0.01, and it got a rank of 1 because it was the smallest difference. To create our test statistic, now we're going to create a signed rank. The signed rank is going to be we're going to add up only the positive ranks and then add up only the negative ranks and use that to create our test statistic. In this case, to do a signed rank, we just take the rank and multiply by the cell that contains our positive or negative information. In this way, all of the positive ranks will stay positive and all of the negative uh, data points will become negative ranks copy, paste, and you'll notice that the, the data point that was ranked 4 is now ranked negative 4 because it came from a negative difference. Likewise, 
the data point that was ranked third lowest in this case gets a negative 3 now because it was a negative difference. <clears throat> to find the test statistic, we need to add up the positive sum, in other words, the sum of all the positive ranks and the sum of all the negative ranks. In this case, Excel has a cool function called sum if, which will only add things given a certain criteria. So I'm going to enter for the positive sum, I want to sum if my range is the data set that's going to create my rules for what gets summed up. My criteria will go in quotes, and the criteria will be greater than zero. In this case, I only want to add up the data points that are greater than zero. And finally, I need to tell it what I'd like to add up, which is just the same column as the first input, all those separated by commas. When I enter this, it adds up 71. If you add up all of the positive ranks individually, you'll get 71. Excel can make this a very quick task. The negative sum is going to look very similar. We're going to sum if this range is what we want to use for our criteria. In this case, we want to go less than 0 in quotes. And then again, we want to go with this range for what we add up. The negative sum was 7. When you choose your test statistic, it's usually easier with most tables to simply choose the lower value of the two in terms of absolute values. In other words, consider them both to be positive test statistics and take the lower value. Thus, our test statistic is 7. 7 represents the sum of the ranks for the two data points that were negative. As is typical with a hypothesis test, once you gather the test statistic, you need to arrive at a conclusion about what you're going to do with the null hypothesis. You need a critical value. The critical value comes from a table in your book. It's the signed rank table. Let's assume we're doing the test at the 5% level of significance, and we're doing a two-tailed test. So I'm going to go to the two-tailed 5% level column of my signed rank table. And I'm going to go to the sample size for 12, because this is a, a test with a sample size of 12. I see my critical value there as being 14. So make sure you can find 14 in your signed rank Wilcoxon table. My test statistic was 7. If the test stat is less than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. So in our next step, we reject the null hypothesis because 7, the test statistic, is less than 14, the critical value. We say there is sufficient evidence to suggest that there is a difference between the additives in terms of gas mileage.